who do you look and up to and admire in the surfing world? In the surfing world, I've always admired um, the female champions that have led the way for myself. So Lane Beachley, she has seven world titles. So currently Lane and I are equal for the most world championships of any woman on the planet. And um, naturally I'm pretty competitive. So I'd like to win one more just to say that I've got the most. <laughs> what is your favorite trick to do when you're in the water? My favorite trick I'm still working on a lot of the aerials and stuff because I'm, that's not a strength of mine, but I think any surfer, their favorite thing to do in the surf is to get barreled. So that's where you go inside of the wave and then you come out again yeah. and yeah. it's it's the coolest thing in the world. Have you ever been barreled? Uh, maybe once or twice. Awesome. Each of our hosts have five words that they're going to give you. It's surfing slang, and we're going to see how well um, you know these terms, if you can give us a definition, and we'll just see really how much of a pro surfer you are, all right? You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. A grommet. A grommet is like uh, a little kid or someone who's starting to surf. Um, I usually, I guess you're sort of still called a grommet until you're like 15, but come to think of it, my dad is 67 and he surfs more than anybody that I know. And so he's still a grommet. We basically call him a grommet because he frosts out really hard. <laughs> Next one is macking. Macking. Yeah, macking is like when it's really big. So say you pull up to the waves in Hawaii and the waves are huge and you pretty much look at your friend and you say, oh my God, it's macking out there. A nug? <laughs> a nug is, um, a nug is like a really good wave. So when you see a good wave coming towards you, you're like, whoa, how good is this? This is a nug. Have you ever seen a dolphin while surfing? I have. I've seen lots and lots of dolphins. Um, you know, some of my favorite memories of surfing uh, around the world uh, have been when you basically can see the waves coming from a long way away and you see the dolphins jumping through the waves from way out the back and you can actually turn and, and paddle into that same wave that you know that they're riding. And um, I had one recently down at Lennox Head where I paddled into the wave because I saw the dolphins surfing the wave too. And I got to my feet and the dolphin like jumped out of the wave right in front of me and almost landed just over the nose of my surfboard and then swam underneath my board as we were surfing. It was like we were surfing together. Um, so when things get hard, how do you push through? Yep. Um, when I've had the toughest moments in my career, you know, usually it's, it's injuries where you can't surf or you know, you can't do the things that you want to do. Um, and, you know, the toughest moments are, they're great because you learn so much. You learn so much about yourself and you learn so much about what your body is capable of and also what your mind is capable of. So I think when I'm really feeling the most down, um, I try and do the things that, the simple things that make me happy. And that's, you know, I love listening to good music. I love just reading a really good book and something that can take my mind off it. But I also love to just write, like just journal about how I'm feeling. And, and it's sort of such a nice way to, to get things off, you know, off my chest. Okay. Do you like the orange on the bottom? And there's my fins. Well, no fins in it, but yeah. It's looking, looking pretty I'm fresh. It is brand new. I haven't ridden this one yet, so. Have you ever seen a shark in the water? I was waiting for a shark question. Um, I think that might be the most popular question is, am I scared of sharks? But I, I've seen shapes underwater that were potentially sharks. Um, during competition, sometimes they do have to pull us out of the water and wait for the shark to swim through and then we get back in the water. So. It's a little scary, but that's like okay. Waiting for it's, a, it's waiting for a zebra crossing. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of like if, 
you know, if you're playing tennis or something and a, a lion walks onto the court and they're like, okay, we're going to stop the, the tennis game for a second, let the lion walk across, <laughs> and then, okay, ready to go again. Resume. That's, that's literally what happened to us. So. Before we go, we've got lots of people tuning in from around the hospital. Um, so I wanted to see if you had a message for the rest of the kids in the hospital and our, our amazing healthcare workers. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I just want to say, I hope you're all doing good. And, and um, you know, thank you so much for all the hard work and the hours that you're all putting in, the healthcare workers that are putting in. Um, you know, it, it doesn't go by unnoticed. And, and you know, from all of us uh, outside and around that, you know, we get these luxuries. I just want to say that we're thinking of you guys and sending you so much positive energy and, and um, hope to see you all out at the beach sometime soon. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, girls. Sending lots of love thank to everyone you. out there. Good luck, Steph, and we'll see you soon. And thanks, Zosha, and also to Kai and Oren for joining us today. We will see you on the next Juice TV virtual visit. See you, Zosha. Bye, <laughs> thanks, Steph. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.